Uh, hey there. Uh, I wanted to make this video for sort of oddly specific problem I came across recently because uh, I think the solution might be uh, beneficial to other people. So here I have this map I created recently of Torreya State Park up in the Florida Panhandle. Um, and I made this map mostly to test out uh, this contour hatching effect. Uh, which w what came from a, a workflow for ArcGIS Pro created by Warren Davison, uh, which is really cool. And I will, I will link it down in the description for this video. But um, I made this map, and I, I knew I wanted to go for a kind of monochromatic black and white look. Uh, and worked on the map, and after I exported it and was done with it, uh, I came back to it later and realized, you know, maybe, maybe I shouldn't have done black and white. I could have done you know, all these different colors, could have done green or red or blue. And I've really been on a a, a thing for uh, monochromatic red stuff recently. And so I was looking at this map and thought, well, I could go back into, in my case, the ArcGIS Pro project I used to create this. I could go in and I could re-symbolize every single one of these um, symbols on my map and the boundaries and the trails and all that and fine-tune them to all be varying shades of red but I figured there has to be a way since this is already it's just a single gradient from white to black there has to be a way to swap that gradient out with uh, another color uh, apart from black go from white to something else um, and after poking around, I found there is, in fact, a way to do that. So if you have a monochromatic map like this, and you'd like to take it from black and white to a different color, or maybe you have a monochromatic red map and you'd like to make it all blue, uh, here's a good way you can do it. So this program I'm looking at is called GIMP. Uh, it's a open source alternative to uh, things like Photoshop. It's a, a, a raster image uh, manipulator program. Oops. So all you need to do here, uh, open up your file in GIMP. Uh, you can go to File, Open, or you can right-click your file and go to Open with GIMP. Uh, and then it's really just a couple of steps. So in my case, when I created this map, uh, I kind of made it washed out by default. Like I didn't use any uh, full black on this map apart from uh, in, in some of these hatchers here. Um, and the rest of it's all just these varying shades of gray. And I found that I get better results if I make sure I have some full black in the map somewhere. Um, as opposed to going from white to dark grays like I had. Now if you're going from a color map, and we'll look at that later, you could, uh, I, I would recommend changing it back to just black and white before you go to another color. Uh, and to do that, you can go up to the colors menu and go to desaturate and then desaturate again. There's color to gray option, but I find that the desaturate option usually works better. Um, so use that tool, bring it all the way down to full uh, desaturation. And the second thing we want to do is we want to go to uh, the image tab, go to mode, and check that you are using RGB. So in my case, I exported this map uh, with the as an 8-bit grayscale because it was black and white. But if we're going to be colorizing it, we obviously need to go into a color mode. Um, so make sure you have that setting enabled. And then the, the, what I mentioned earlier, uh, a step that I found has been producing better results to have, uh, your, your darkest colors be full black. Uh, we can do that by going to colors and levels. You'll get this window here. That'll let you kind of crunch down your minimum and maximum uh, values in your pictures. So in my case, 
the darks aren't quite dark enough. I don't have a lot in here that's full black. But if I go here and uh, grab uh, where it says input levels, you'll see th uh, three arrows. There'll be a black one, a gray one, and a white one. If I grab that black one and pull it up uh, a fair amount, you can see if, if you have, there's a preview button here uh, in the bottom left of the window. As I toggle that, you can see what's changed in the map um, since it's, it's pretty slow. I'm going to bump that up uh, quite a fair a fair bit. Oops. And you can kind of toggle this to uh, the year before and after. Um, and I think that probably looks about good, so I'm going to hit OK. And that way I have a... Uh, uh, really a full gradient between full white and something at least closer to full black, if not full black, whereas before I was working with something kind of washed out. So now that we've done that, uh, you need to choose whatever color you want to uh, convert to. So in my case, I already have this nice red here, uh, and I think I'm just going to stick with that. Uh, you want to make sure that the color you're using is on is the active foreground color in uh, GIMP. I think Photoshop does this as well. Most programs do this. You have a foreground and a background color um, because the gradient we're going to be replacing our white to black gradient with uh, it, it uses this foreground and background color. So the gradient's going to go from white to red as opposed to white to black. Um, if you have these switched, you'll get kind of an inverted image where everything that's white on my picture right now will be full red, and then the, the black will be uh, full white. Uh, so make sure you have your color in the foreground, and you want white in the background. And then we're going to go to Colors at the top, and Map, and Gradient Map. And what that does is it replaces your gradient of white to black with white to whatever color you've picked in your foreground. Uh, and it's as easy as that. It's uh, I thought it was pretty handy. So if you if you create a monochromatic uh, map, or it, it can be any image, but I've been focusing on maps here, and decide you wanted to do some other color, there you go. You don't have to completely redo all of your, your symbology or your, uh, your project file. Now, if you're starting with a, a color instead of black and white, uh, we can do what I said earlier. We can go to Colors, Desaturate, and that'll bring us to black and white. But you can see here again, since, since our, our original gradient, white to black, we're going from the lightest color possible to the darkest color possible. When we change it to white to red, red isn't quite as dark as black. So when I go to desaturate it, or if I have an image that was already uh, um, using a, a color gradient as opposed to just uh, white to black, uh, it's going to be a little bit washed out when we do that. So again, you can just, uh, before you use the color gradient to swap to a different color, you want to do the desaturate we just did. Uh, and then go back to levels, and we can kind of crunch these blacks down again. And that's going to make sure that whatever color you're going to, you're getting the full spectrum from white to that color. Uh, otherwise, you'll get this kind of washed out look. Um, feel free to try it, see what it looks like, but I, I found that this works best. Um, so here we'll do, uh, and I was using darker colors, but we can do like a, We'll do like a neon pink for our gradient, uh, just to show you. Um, and again, we're going to go to uh, Colors, Map, and then Gradient Map. And there you go. Uh, now we hit, we're going all the way from white to that full bright pink. Um, and there's lots of things in GIMP you could do. Uh, you don't have to necessarily do things in the order I just showed you. You could... Uh, if that pink is a little too ridiculous for you, but you want something similar, you could go to colors, desaturate, 
again. And instead of uh, using 100% opacity in this tool, which makes it go all the way uh, to, to full grayscale, we can turn this down. Uh, and you can see we can kind of get some varying uh, steps in between, you know, that full hot pink we just used and then full black and white. So you can kind of you can kind of tone it down a bit and you could also go back and play with that levels uh tool after you've colorized it but you know just play around with it uh and, and that's it so i hope someone finds that helpful uh i know i've i've run into this several times now where i want to kind of retheme a map i made for whatever reason uh so one more thing i wanted to note is that you can use this to convert maps that aren't monochromatic into monochromatic as well. Um, so here's a, a another map I made, um, Grave Smoky Mountains map, and it's really the the same exact process as if we were using a, a monochromatic map with color going to another color. You just go to uh, colors, desaturate, desaturate. We're going to do the full desaturation. You can play around with the levels here if you want, but otherwise, you know, pick your color for your foreground and go back to colors, map, gradient map, uh, and you get something like that. Uh, and that, that's, I think that's pretty cool looking. Uh, certainly a, a, a quick way to kind of really change up your maps. Um, so it's definitely interesting. So uh, play around with that. I know, I know I will be. Um, so uh, uh, thanks again for watching. I hope you found something kind of useful here. Um, and uh, have a good one.